It was so steep that they couldn't go back and they couldn't go forward safely walking. And Shackleton said, I think we just need to slide for it. And so they launched off on about a thousand foot trip from the top of this mountain into this valley, basically riding on their rear ends. Um, finally, they had to climb down a frozen waterfall. And they could see when they were halfway down this waterfall, they could see off in the distance, there was the whaling station. And they knew that they were going to make it. Looking back on this period of time, during this last 35 miles, when they compared notes, each of them said, we were only three, but we always felt like there was a fourth. Oh, praise God. And the fourth man um, that they felt, whose presence was palpable, was something that they cherished afterwards. It's made, it's made it into all their accounts. Shackleton and his men, they got to the whaling station. It was the early morning hours. People were just beginning to stir. And the three of them marched up to the foreman's door. The foreman thinks to himself, everybody I know is inside this building. <clears throat> and so he went to the front door and he threw the door open and he looked at these three men who had neither showered, nor cut their hair or their beards, and who appeared on his doorstep. And he stared at them for a long moment without a breath. And then he said, who in the blank are you? <laughs> and the story goes that, as told by one of the Norwegian fishermen who was standing there, that the, the, the person, the middle person in the group stepped forward and he paused and in a quiet voice said, my name is Shackleton. According to the Norwegian fisherman's story, fisherman's story. Uh, both he and the foreman left. Now, I'll tell you something else about Shackleton. Scottish descent. They breathe them tough up there. Yeah. I thought it would say so. <laughs> he had had the episodes where he collapsed where he collapsed, pulling on a rope or doing some chore. And uh, his wife insisted that he go to see a doctor. And so he did, being a dutiful husband. And uh, he went for his checkup. And he would not allow the doctor to examine his heart. And it turns out that people speculate, he died of a heart attack in 47, but people speculate that he had a hole in his heart. Now, I won't make any comments about you know, the state of men in general in society today. But uh, you can just imagine what Shackleton's perspective would have been about COVID-19. Amen. Um, you know, I can't go to the office. I can't do this. I can't do that. I can't go to church. I can't open the building. This is actually not the point of my sermon. Um, but it's sort of an aside because I, I sort of think about the lack of intrepid intrepidness uh, in, in people.
people today. And of course, for Shackleton and his men, when they arrived safely in South Georgia, that was not the end of it. Because somebody had to go back to Elephant Island. Because you had you had 23 guys there and they needed to be rescued. And so Shackleton is in the middle of the war. And Shackleton's trying to get a boat to go back. Nobody will give him a boat. Finally, through several months of effort, okay, he managed to secure a boat and they made the trip. And um, they were stopped on the way to Elephant Island three times. Ice prevented them from getting there, or adverse storms prevented them from getting there. And finally, they made it to Elephant Island. And on the shore of the island were all of his men. Oh, wow. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Not only were they all there, they were all packed and ready to go. <laughs> Amen. And so they ran the ship aground, the lifeboats aground, threw everybody into them and launched back out because they had a narrow window, because everything was falling apart in the sea again. And Shackleton said to them, how is it that you were ready? And they said, the doctor told us every single morning since you left, boys, get your stuff together. The boss may come back today. Amen. Amen. Now, that story took significantly longer to tell than I expected it was going to. If you could open your Bibles with me to Matthew chapter 13. Matthew chapter 13, verse 44. Matthew chapter 13, verse 44. You know, this is always a story that is told about our purchase of salvation. Salvation is free, but it will cost you everything, we're told. Amen. Chapter 13, verse 44. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto treasure hid in a field, which when a man has found it, he hides it. And for joy thereof, he goes and sells everything that he has and buys that field. And again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a merchant man seeking good pearls, who when he has found one pearl, when he has found one pearl of great price, he went and sold everything that he had, and he bought it. These parables are talking about our recognition that heaven is worth giving everything up for. Amen. But they are not just about that. When the Lord made the trip from heaven to here, he had a hole in his heart Amen. for you. For, for you. And you think about the, the effort to save those guys on Elephant Island. That's nothing compared to the sacrifice the Lord made to you. The parables are the parables are a symbol of Christ. And when he goes shopping for pearls, he finds one pearl of great price. And he looks at it and he says, 
I like this pearl. I've never seen one like it. I've never seen one like it. It's very unique. How much is this pearl? The merchant says, that pearl is very expensive, Jesus. It's very expensive. Are you sure you want that pearl? pearl? This is the one I want. This is the one I want. How much is it? Jesus, that one is very expensive. It will cost you your life. He says, he looks at it and he says, I'll take it. Abraham buried his wife, Sarah, in the field of Machpelah. Generations of the patriarchs thereafter were buried in that field. You know the story, it's in Genesis chapter 23. And the field was where Abraham and Isaac Jacob and Leah and Joseph, they were all buried in that field. And I read this verse and I think to myself, there's treasure in that field for Jesus. And everybody who is a children, who are children of God, according to the faith of Abraham, are in that field, symbolically. And the Lord came and he paid an infinite price for us, for us. Because he thought to himself, I cannot stand to live without them. Shackleton could not stand the thought of his men on elephant time by themselves. He was willing to risk everything for them. 800 miles in a glorified canoe for them. He didn't care if he lived or died. He was going to make the effort. And today, the Bible says that you personally are bought with a price. Amen. You are bought with a price. Not with corruptible things, but with the precious blood of the Son of God. Amen. You personally. You personally. That is the value of you personally as you sit here. Jesus loves you. He loves you. And He would rather die than be in heaven without you. And so if you have ever felt the call, the tug of the Lord on your heart, and have not surrendered to Him, I want you to bow your head with me now. And I want you to give your heart to the Lord. You don't have to make a show of it in public. Oh, I'm not a great believer in altar calls. Um, but if you have never given your heart to the Lord, The Bible says that God so loved the world that He gave. You think about what He gave. He gave light and this earth, and sunshine and the harvest and animals. He gave. All through the Bible, He gave. And when the time came for Him to give of Himself, of the ultimate sacrifice, in the person of His Son, he gave his son. Now life was willingly laid down for you. And that's the truth. That's the truth. So I'm up here today. I'm up here today to tear at Satan's stronghold. We don't know how long this world will last. We don't know how long our lives will last. 
But today is the day of salvation. Let's bow our heads. Father in heaven, Lord, you're the only one who's worth worshiping. Lord, in the person of your Son, you put this world on your back and you carried it in the person of your Son for us. Overcoming and living and then laying down your life for us. The life of your Son for us. To buy us back. And Father, in this moment, as the people are listening, Pray that you will convict their heart of their value. Father, I pray that if there is a, a heart here who has been running from you, who has been hiding from you, they will they will stop running. They will stop hiding. Lord, and that they will recognize that you love them. And that you're the only one worth surrendering to. To repent, Lord, and to give their life to you. And to be made. Father, for those of us who have been in the faith. Lord, we need to remember. There are people here, I'm sure, who need to remember. About the value of a soul. Their soul themselves purchased by your blood. Lord, some of us, we've been reluctant to speak a word in due season to our neighbors. We've been reluctant to cross the street. Lord, help us to re recognize that that sacrifice was made for them as well. Shackleton went 800 miles do, basically, for those men. Lord, you came from heaven for us. Lord, we need, to, we need to go across the street. We need to go across the street because time is short and there's people who need to hear the truth. And this is the truth. In Jesus' name. Amen.